they see it's Steve Whitty here with another video this is another recent listens video stuff I've been listening to about a month back uh, just a little bit behind on myself where I've done some other types of videos um, been a bit busy week for me come a year older on Wednesday um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's, you know listening to music whatever whatever weather's been absolutely awful in the UK it's been absolutely bucketing it down in fact it's just gone very dark now it looks a bit ominous now there might be some more some more rain so hey ho but uh, I do prefer my grass to be green I suppose um, yes as I said this video is a recent listens video so I'm going to show you some records that I've been listening purchased recently uh, uh, about a month, month half ago and I've listened to so let's start off Love my comps. This is the best of Julie Driscoll, Brian Auger, and the Trinity. This came out on Polydor. I don't know if you can see that this there, the ninety nine pence. So when it came out, it was ninety nine pence. Um, the album, and it's basically as it says, it's the best of, and probably the best known track on here is this. Is this uh, their version? The version of this wheels on fire. Um, which probably gained a life of its own because after being used for the theme for absolutely fab, fab absolutely fabulous. So yeah, it's, it's an enjoyable time place, and actually just re it's just reiterate how what a great voice Julie Driscoll ha ha has got. Um, picked up a couple of Beatles uh, uh, pro products which I hadn't got. This is a collection of. Beatles oldies. I think this came out in 1966, 67. It might be 66. You can see the photo there. Oldies, but good, but goldies. Um, it's a mono version. Picked it up for a pound. I think with records of, of, of Titty Beatles, some Red Beatles records there of the 60s. They've been well and truly um, uh, played to death. Um, yeah, and it's uh, and it's it's, it's the what it is. It's a timepiece, you know. You've got all the, the obvious stuff on it. Here. It's, it's as it says, it's a greatest hit. Don't really need to go on further with that. Also managed to pick up a copy of Rock and Roll Music. Now this was released as a double album. This is the double album that was released in nineteen seventy six. Um, and. It's basically celebrating the rock and roll influences on, on the Beatles. Um, it was put together by George Martin. Um, so you've got the, the Twist and Shout sort of standing there. Then there's some of the covers on there, like Long Tour Sally, rock and roll music. Um, it was at, around this time, it came out. Things like um, Back in the USSR was released as, as a single. Um, You've got Hey Bolt, I'll Get Back is also on here. When it came out, the cover um, received a lot of flack. And it's primarily because they were putting things like Coke, I think, Coke bottle on there. And it was deemed, I mean, John Lennon apparently offered to do the sleeve for this and it got turned down. Um, it got... It, 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 it's a th thing showing the uh, things like the Coke, the bottle of Coke... It, and whatever didn't really sh wasn't what all the Beatles were about. So the Beatles themselves were a little unhappy with the cover. Um, subsequently, this album got reissued on Music for Pleasure like budget label, and it got split in two. So disc one became volume one, and disc two became volume two. So this is why I picked this up to see this as a complete set, um, and I do it, and and. and Picked up the uh, music for pleasure ones because I just didn't feel they were essential. But to see this, I thought, yeah, I'll take this. So, a couple of videos ago, I was talking about records that remind me of childhood and um, it showed this De Def Leppard High and Dry. Now, I mean, this is I bought this a couple of uh, a few weeks back because um, my original copy I had when I was 16, I sort of like um, <laughs> I played it to death and I think I binned it because it was so badly. Um, but I have a soft spot for this album, uh, obviously. Um, I f I do feel, you know, and obviously everyone goes on about Pymatia and Hysteria, but I think this is as good as that. As that. Um, you can see the direction now the band were going in. It radio friendly. I mean, Death Flipper do get a bit of flack sometimes. Um, 
but they never made it a secret that their ambition was to be the biggest band on the planet, as biggest band as they could be. And to do that, you know, you need to have airplay. So I went with Muck Langer. It was the first album with Muck Langer. In fact, during recording of this, I've just been reading interviewing Record Collector. Um, while White, Muck Langer was delayed producing Four and a Four and things that tight for the band. In fact, Joe Elliott had to go and work on a building site before re -re recording in order to get have some money coming in. Um, this um, um, this rep was, did represent a big a, a big jump for them. But they knew what they wanted, and he could see what he wanted in the band. Um, next album. Uh, this is Martha and the Muffins, and this is Metro Music. Um, I got this for a pound. Um, it's an old... It's, yeah, it's the reason because it's been played to death, because it used to be in a record library. Um and it's got this probably the best known tracks the opening track here, Echo Beach. Um, in fact, it's been highlighted, somebody's highlighted it there on there. You'll have to forgive the light, it's still getting a bit dark out there. I just can't be bothered to turn the light, light on. Um, the album itself's not bad. New Wave, yeah, I, I would say New Wave. I think there are there, there's some elements of Roxy music in there as well. Um, I actually quite enjoyed it. It's quite an enjoyable album. It's worth well worth picking up. It's I wouldn't spend too much on it, but if you see it for a pound, it's worth having just for the curio. curio. I'm pleased to pick up this album. This is framed by the sensational Alex Harvey band. This is their debut album, I believe. Um, nice co cover. Um, pull out the record. You open the record, you see there that Alex Harvey's there. Um, this is not an original pressing, because the original pressings were a vertical swell. This is a spaceship vertigo, so that's second pressing. Um, which I'm not too bothered about, to be quite honest, because it would cost me an arm and leg to get an original. Um, this, it, uh, this is just an absolute corking album. Um, Isabel Gowdy, one of my favourite framed title track. Um, there's no lights on the Christmas tree, mother. They're burning big Louis tonight. Um, yeah, it's a really good album. Um, I'll say, please, please, start. I've got again a soft spot for Alex Harvey band. Um, entertaining. If you see, go on YouTube and put type in that old oh, grey whistle test uh, appearances. You'll see that for yourself. Pick this up for a couple of quid. This is Super Gold, uh, t best of Ike and Tina Turner. This is the German comp on the United Artists label. I picked this up because at the moment on the television there is one track, their version of Creedence Clear Clearwater Revival's um, Proud Mary, which has been used as music for an advert for a car uh, for the AA, which is a car recovery breakdown service. Um, and so it's been actually be played. I've been played to death. So to see this for a couple of quid, I thought, oh yeah, what? Well, I'll take it. Um, but it's not. It's a very good album, actually. A very good album. Got not much city limit. You've got a live version of River Deep Mountain High, not the original. So this is sort of like focuses on really the, like the um, the early seventies period, very much from that. And very, really, really good, really good comp to have. Album, I was really pleased. This is an original Quadrophenia. Um, I got it for £15. Um, and the reason it's cost me a little bit less than what it would do. The covers are okay, but the book, it's got the book, but it's, four, it's fallen out, so to speak. Um, so that's why the price has come in. Come in. But great album. Great album. I recently re saw the. Um, documentary that they've made about the Mike Hilton album and that's Pete Townsend going on and you have to say you're glad that you have you have Roger Daltrey because I think when Pete Cohen came up with these ideas Roger could go with it they went Bran went with it um so you've got here uh, the real me um 515s on here the best known track and then the last track Love Rain Over Me, it's 
Daltrey's best vocal performance. He absolutely belts it out on on this track. It is just absolutely. It's the highlight, highlight, highlight the old album. I mean, yeah, it's, it's sort of like the mod scene of the sixties, and I suppose disillusionment of youth. Um, you know, you see, you see at the back there that the back scooter is in the sea. Um, yeah, it's just a really corking, absolute brilliant record, brilliant album. Um, well pleased to have that. I realise I don't really have that much who in, in my in vinyl wise. Artist I was really far, pleased to pick up, and this is Kevin Ayres. This is uh, album, uh, uh, on the Harvest Heritage label. This is a compilation album called Oddities. So it's a play on the word Oddities. You can see it's it's way it's done. It's two separate words. Um, his stuff on vinyl is very expensive, so to find this um, as a comp, I was I'm more than happy to pick it up. Um, obviously, he's well known for being the original bass player with Soft Machine, and then went on um, to do his own thing. Very quintessentially English, uh, very eccentric. Some of it. Um, love the track, Lady Rachel. Um, absolutely beautiful, beautiful song. Um, Butterfly Dance, I loved Stars. Mike Oldfield uh, played in his band for a, a bit for a while. Um, yeah, it's it's well worth checking out, checking him out. I want to check some more of his stuff out, but as I say, I'm not going to pay for the notes for for it. I'll probably just do it via Spotify at the moment. Couple of ja I found a couple of him, James Brown. This is live at the Apollo Volume One. Um, this is a Dutch issue. Uh, 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 album um, so I was just pleased to have that um, I'm not sure if it's if it's live at, at, at the Polo I'm not sure about that but uh, it's a good live album you know I can't I can't say any fairer than that um, and then another Dutch James Brown fan this is James, King of Soul James Brown and the Furies from, and, the, and his famous Flames it's got I've got a feeling on this you've got the power um, here I go. It's again, yeah, I don't think you can go wrong with a bit of James Brown in, in your life. Curious, I paid a for, paid a pound for this is Yvonne Element, and this is her album Night Flight. This does have If I Can't F, um, If I Can't Have You, which the Gibb Brothers wrote and appeared on the Saturday Night Fever um, soundtrack. Famously played Mary Magdalene, Magdalene at the Jesus Christ Superstar film. She, at this time, was also touring with, uh, back in singing with Eric Clapton. Um, um, so this is on the RSO label, so this is part, part of the link there. It's not a bad album. It's very soft rock. Soft rock. Um, for what it's for, it's only going to get rid. It, it's, it's, it's a very listenable album. Nothing... Outstanding, nothing that's going to make you go, Ooh, you know what? I'll need to dig, I'll dig around for more of the stuff, but it's all right. I, I yeah, you know, I, I mean, you see it and you've got a spare quid to go out and spend. Uh, yeah, I'd pick it up. I recommend you have a listen to it. Now, when I show some CDs, I mentioned that I go to a place called Reusers, which is just up the road from me, it's the camp opposite the council tip, mainly because it's CDs. Um, I don't really go there for. For vinyl, they've got vinyl, but some of it's overpriced. But they do have a big section, which is the stuff that you normally see in charity shops, which is uh, uh, Perry Como, uh, Max Bygraves, Harry Seacombe, Mantovani, uh, that sort of stuff. But sometimes it's worth having a pick through, because they only sell it for 75 pence. You think, well, okay. And I saw this woman picture, and she looked like she got a couple of albums that were thinking, oh, let's have a look. So, for 75 pence, I've managed to pick up a copy. This, I was absolutely floored to find this. I'm Butterflies in a Gaddle of Eda. Um, this is an American pressing on the Akko label. I mean, this is a second pressing, it's not an original. The only thing that's wrong with it is the sleeves a bit torn. 
but plays beautifully, cleans it up, plays really well. Well, I'm happy to buy buying that, and that 75 pence, it was like the bargain of the day, I suppose. For all these wasted trips that you go into these uh, charity shops and um, thrift stores, you sometimes you do come out with something that's worth having, so I was really pleased to have that. And I thought, well, something for, let's have a root round, see what else they've got, if they've got anything. Nothing was uh, promising, but then I found this. And I thought, you know what? I've got a couple of um, move, move comps, but another one doesn't hurt. Um, this is a music for pleasure um, comp. I'm trying to think when this came out. Doesn't say. Um, but this focuses on the sort of later years of the comp. Uh, the comp. So you've got the band there after Ace Kefford left. So you've got on here uh, Hello Susie, Cherry Blossom Cl Clinic, Kilroy was here. There's no hits on here. Um, this is sort of a, very much picking up on, on, the, on, on the albums. But yeah, it's well worth, well worth picking up. Again, well worth picking up. Um, not long, only a few, few more records to show. Um, managed to pick this up quite cheaply. This is Black Sabbath live at last. This is an unofficial live album. This was released in 1980 on the NEMS label. And I think it just picks up on the fact that what Black the original lineup Black Sabbath never put an official live album out. Um, really, until the end, I think. I'm not sure. But it's, certainly in that 70s period, there was no official live album. First live album was Live Evil with Ronnie Dio. But this was sort of like cashing. Paranoid had been re released as a single in 1980, become a hit, and they decided to put this out. It was banned, didn't the band, none of the band um, endorsed it. They felt it was a bit of a rip off. Um, and there's elements of it, it just sounds like a bit of a bootleg, but it's an all right. It's, it's as a timepiece of what Sabbath were at that time, it's worth having. Picked up this, The Book of Talisman by Deep Purple. It's their second album. Again, this is an American edition. This is on the... Uh, I think I'll read this in, in this light. Again, sleeves have seen better days, but hey ho. Yeah, I'm trying to read, read that label. Um, Tetra Motion Label? I don't know. Uh, you can pull me up on that if you want. Um, so it's American. Is this the second album to follow up to um, Shades of Deep Purple, which was big for them in the States, purely for the single hush. It followed the same pattern. Um, it's got Listen, Learn, Listen, Learn Read On, Kentucky their version of Neil Diamond's Kentucky Woman's on here. Um, a version of River Deep Mountain High. Um, it's okay. It's it's more it's more more, more the same. Um, Rod Rod Evans is, is sort of like crooning it, crooning out the tunes. It obviously, it wasn't the direct. It wasn't a success. It's successful, and I think when they did the third album, the self titled Deep Purple, it wasn't. It just wasn't going in the direction that um, particularly Richie Blackmore wanted. And obviously, they made the changes in order to get the um, um, the Mark II line up, up and going, and the and the, the one and get in rock out, which we all know and love. Final album I'm going to show in this. This is called Ro Rock Roots Genesis. Now, this is released on the Decca label. This was released in 1975, I believe. Um, this is very much showcases um, the first album from Genesis to Revelation. It's pretty much th this album plus a couple of um, B-sides, uh, a couple of, uh, uh, there's an, an A-side that was released um, separately, Winter's Tale and One-Eyed How, which was the B-side to it. Um, you also got Silent Sun is on here as well with this B-side, That's Me. Then the rest of it is the from Genesis to Revelation album. Genesis was signed a uh, uh, schoolboys at Bet essentially at that time. It went to Charterhouse Public School. Jonathan King, who had just become um, well famous for 
the hit everyone's gone to the moon he'd gone back to, sort of, to his old school just to sort of like um just to say hello and i think the band gave him frosted the tape a, a, a sort of rough demo he liked what they heard he brought them in in this he really wanted them to be like the Bee Gees. um this isn't what genesis became you know uh, even when you listen to trespass the, the big difference is the difference is really big on there but it's as a timepiece it's well worth having and i'd say i picked this up for a couple of quid you, you know if you see it it's well worth having if you can't find the original album just for your genesis com in completion um there you go that's that video done and dusted so if you're new to the channel and you like what you see thumbs up oh, so, cl sorry click on the subscribe button uh, uh, more the merrier thumbs up thumbs down love the interaction and do uh, feel free to leave a comment because i will get back to you so enjoy your Sunday. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to probably avoiding showers, I think. Um, so until the next video, take care of yourselves, VC. Um, keep spinning, and more importantly, keep smiling.